you have an output from one part and output from the other part, and you concatenate them. Or you want to give an error message when you divide by zero rather than exploding. And uh, so you pass it around, you know, either, yep, this is an answer or this is an error message. And so those are the three concrete examples. So, you know, each of those is easy to do. You just completely rewrite the program. And the point was, Here's an easy way to do it where you don't have to completely rewrite the program. There's one thing that you glossed over that I, I had. A, it took me a very long time to kind of see the connection was that it the connection between denotational semantics and interpreters for functional languages. Could you like elaborate a little bit on, on that for some of our listeners? They're the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> well, <laughs> I mean, they're phrased in such different ways. Like you never see it talked about as an interpreter for functional language. You just really? see you're denoting it as a mathematical. Well, I think it's denoted as a mathematical object. And I forget that there's this connection actually to, I guess, a Lambda term is a program and it's also a mathematical object. So I guess that's, that's the whole connection, but it took me like 10 years to figure this so, out. It was uh, John Reynolds wrote some really great papers about all this stuff. And right. So he went and talked to the people developing denotational semantics and then wrote a tutorial on continuations 